Welcome back to Morning Scramble. You know, it's been a long time since I've been in the dating scene, and a lot has changed, especially with technology. And joining me now is Dr. Paul DePompo. He's a psychologist from Southern California. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for joining it's us. great to be here today. So what is this trend you're calling disposable dating? You say it's a phenomenon. What's it about? Yeah, well, today, when someone is dating today, it's really hard. It's like you got to try to be open and vulnerable on one hand, and on the other hand, it's like you're running your own political campaign. You know, you've got like the online profile you're trying right. to perfect. You got that same date you're trying to perfect over and over again. So disposable dating is when you have this assumption that the actual act of dating shouldn't be so hard. So if you're starting to feel a little vulnerable or maybe you, know, you don't want to settle, you're afraid, so you just swipe on. You know, and, and just go lot, on to the next one. Well, and, and they call it Tinder walking. Guys are like even doing this and just like going on and on to the next. That's why uh, Tinder recently has a new way to swipe up if you're really serious. Oh, this whole thing is just crazy, but a lot it of is. people are doing it. Mm -hmm. What are the repercussions of something like this? I mean, what does it tend to lead to well, for it's, people? It's hard because like you can say, okay, you're, say you're in your 20s and you're going to be disposable dating. You might tell yourself, oh, it's no big deal. I'm in my 20s. But what's been shown is the who you date when you're in your 20s and how you date really leads to who you end up with, mm -hmm. even in your 50s, your 60s. Okay, but what if you're in your 50s and your 60s and you're dating and you're doing disposable dating? Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a different kind of trend you're seeing? I, I am. I'm seeing it all across the board. And I mean, I know it's never too late to make some changes, mm -hmm. but I think the problem is, is that um, there's just a cyber buffet out there. Do you know what I mean? There's so many apps, and there's so many apps that will help you find a date, but there's absolutely no app that's actually gonna help you to find love. Right. So what people are doing is going up to this buffet, they're putting a whole bunch of food on their plate, but they're not savoring what's on their plate. Ah. You know what I mean? And then it's like, putting it. yeah, they're not going deep enough to actually get to know the person on a level that could help them. Well, and social media, of course, has taken things to a whole other level. I mean, you've heard about people breaking up by texting. Mm -hmm. How does this change the field for people? Well, it, it has, and it's become, in my opinion, really sad because technology is making it socially acceptable to just be rude, mm -hmm. to just block someone or or just start um, disappearing. They call it going ghost when you just disappear and it just makes it easy to be rude. And I think that, that we're missing something. We're, the heart of dating is getting lost. Well, I like the fact that you say there are some tips that we can do to help stop this trend. And one of them is having that sort of closing statement phrase or whatever, you know, even if it's been three dates or, or something, you right. know, there needs to be some closure on it, correct? I totally agree with that. Um, I feel like we should try to just date one person at a time just to make sure you can go deep. Make three dates, you know? The problem is right now, more than any other time in life, people are dating multiple people, multiple dates, and it's really hard to like dig deeper. So date one person at a time, give it three dates, and have, a, have an official sign off. So for example, tell them something positive that you liked about them, and then tell them something constructive. So for example, let's just say you're going out with someone and you like them, but they start talking really negatively about their exes, mm -hmm. okay? Now that's, that could be a red flag right. for you. But so let them know. Let them know. So this way, if you're hearing the same thing over and over again, you could actually learn something in the process. But you mentioned giving it three dates. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who they've gone on one date and they just know right off the bat this is not right. connecting. We're just not happening here. Right. Well, I mean, isn't isn't that legitimate? That is legitimate. If but I feel like it's not legitimate if you're you're not getting that intensity that you're looking for mm -hmm. because we've got to look past the intensity and go deeper because if it comes on intense it often burns out that way too so give it three dates if if you feel like we were on the same page in many ways there's some interest there but if if that buzz isn't there get to know each other on a deeper level because the buzz that comes from a deeper level is the love that could really blossom into something more long term what about the differences between men and women when it comes to this disposable dating. I mm -hmm. mean, do you think there are some maybe unfairness when it comes to looking at how men deal with it and how women there deal is, with it? There is, there is today. I mean, I love the fact that everyone is, um, I don't 
like disposable dating, but I love the fact that men and women are doing it. I think it shows something related to the freedom because back in the 60s and 70s, women were fighting for equality, and that was a good thing. But nowadays, there has evolved a double, double standard where if a woman is having a one-night stand from one of these disposable dating situations, um, it's not looked upon positively, you know? Like, when right. was the last time you saw a girl high-five another girl for having a one-night stand? Right. It just doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. So what's your suggestion, then, for people to sort of get around this double standard, I would say? Wouldn't you say it's a double standard? It is absolutely a double standard. But I think, like, for men and women, the real key is to dig deeper, mm -hmm. to go past the initial attraction and to really look for those values and qualities that you would find in a good friend and uh, if you're not dating someone that has the same qualities as a good friend of yours that is a reason to let them go well you ha are a wealth of information great Thank advice you so on your website Thank as well you. it's drpauldepompo.com it and we appreciate you being here Thank on the you. morning scramble wonderful to be here thank you again thanks and when we come back we are talking about virtual reality on a roller coaster at magic mountain